All right, so first order of business for today. If you listen to the wagon, you can hear. We've got that slight rattling sound going on on the passenger side of the car. I showed this on the map from your craft. We both agreed it's more than likely the belt tensioner. So we've got a new one right here with a brand new bearing inside there. So hopefully we'll swap this on. That'll fix that metal rattling sound. It's not chains um, because all the guides are brand new, maybe six or 7,000 miles on them. It's definitely not those. It is all from this side of the engine. So we're gonna toss on a new belt tensioner because when I did all the chains before, um, I did a new belt, water pump, all kind of stuff. For some reason, I put the old tensioner back on. So this one's got, I don't know, 130,000 miles on it. So swap that out and hopefully our sound goes away. So swapping in a new belt tensioner onto your Mark 412 valve or Mark 312 valve, they're both the same. Very, very easy and straightforward. I will have to remove this out of the cover to access the top bolt hole on there to release the tension off of this one and pull the belt off. And after that, there's three bolts on the left side. You can see one, two, and three. And then the whole thing comes back out, bolts renew one, put the belt back on, release the tension, and then uh, good to go. So step one, a side cover has been removed. You can see the bolt hole on our current tensioner. I pulled the new provider bolt out of our new tensioner. We'll thread this right into there. I wanna say this is an M10, if I'm not mistaken. And then we'll go ahead and thread that, grab our ratchet over that one too, there it is. And we'll snug this all the way down, take tension off of our belt, pop the belt off, and then we'll move on to the three bolts on the side there. So now that, that bolt is snugged all the way down, the tension down there is off of our belt. So kind of wiggle your hand down there, pop the belt off. All three of our bolts are out, and now, voila, old tensioner. Is out of the way also want to note if you look inside there i end up using a different bolt the one that provided this one here is just a bit shorter than that one but the extra little bit gives you enough room to actually pull the belt easily off of the uh the tensioner that one would work but you gotta kind of fight it so i just got a longer bolt it made life easier so that one's out you can see all the grease around it so that one's gone, we'll toss in our new one. And hopefully when I start the car, there's a uh, nice and quiet over here. I also had some uh, nicer hardware. Besides that, we use this. So same thread, same length, but a little bit nicer. All right, there she is, new tensioner complete with fancy new hardware. Start with the car and hopefully there's no more sound from the side. All right, so got the car running. It's quieter, but I still hear something on this side. The water pump was new. Um, tension pulley is now new. I don't know, when I had Malik at it together, um, we turned the AC on and off. It's not the clutch on there, and the AC works no problem. It's definitely much quieter now, but there's still that rattle from this side. Maybe it's the water pump pulley. There's no leaks and obviously the car cools itself fine. It's not overheating. It's definitely quieter, but I can still hear something rattling on this side. And it's driving me insane. All right, well, as you can hear now, all is quiet. Turns out, just turn it off and weird noise is gone. So moving on from that, towards the back of the car, I have done magnetic plate. So I have this plate sitting in the back window, which is fine in the daytime and it is Florida, but there's no lights to illuminate at night. So chance of getting pulled over are higher. Now granted this car is all legal, but still if I can just not get pulled over, that's always the move. I was taping it to here because I want to actually screw it in. Uh, the Euro plate tub has the holes way further out. I can't actually match up these ones, I have to drill holes through this one and holes through that. So it's easier just to put magnets back here with a little felt on top of them. And then it sticks on nice and tight, good to go. What I want to do today though, is do the front bumper because I have the Zender plate for the front as well, but I don't want to drill any holes in this bumper. And I've been just taping it on for shows and taking it back off. But we're gonna pull the bumper off, epoxy the magnets. I'm gonna do six, two, four, six on the back side. Um, same thing on the plate. And then that shows just pop it on and then take it back off. All right, our beautiful Zenner bumper is back off the car. The plan now, I'm gonna do the magnets on the 
plate side first and simply hold it exactly where I want it and then I'll put the magnet on the back side that'll hold this so I can adjust it properly and then once this is holding the magnet on the back side if that makes sense I will go ahead and glue those in place and then all be well so it's kind of funny I was standing here at the toolbox and I glanced over and I totally forgot there's a little message on the back of my emblem that says proud of you thanks Mads proud of you too so these are the magnets I'm using here. I got them from Home Depot. They're not the Neo. What are the crazy strong ones are? Because they're out of stock. So I got these ones, but they work pretty well. And then these. Oh, sorry, Mark II. So you can see how good they work. I got this little medium duty felt pads. About the same size as these. That I just stick to there. That way on the paint side, you can see what I'm putting on here. It has the magnet, the felt, not scratch anything. And then magnet on the back. So like I said, we're going to do two four six actually more than enough to hold the plate on all right step one complete magnets with felt on this side are all good to go so now we'll go ahead and smack this on the bumper and get our rear ones in place and then uh we're good to go magnets on the back are in place they're not glued down yet but they're just set in place holding on the front plate so now i can go through and adjust this so it's perfectly center and then we'll glue the back ones i think that's kind of good I gotta go left a little bit, but we'll adjust it. It's kind of cool because like there's a bit of a gap for the magnet, so it's like a floating plate, but no plate frame. Very, very cool. So in the middle of me doing this, and conveniently enough, the bumper's already off, this shows up, which is a Cupra R lip, I wanna say it is. And I'm gonna try and fit onto this bumper because there's no other lips out there that are made for the Zender bumper. And I feel like the Bora R, the Golf R32 are the closest ones to this kind of side profile. But if you look, this bumper is low here and it kind of swoops up. So I'm hoping this lip here will kind of square this out and give us a little bit more towards the front section. But we'll see. It's funny though, because this thing was supposed to arrive on the 14th, like a week ago, but it's been in customs jail since then. And it just got released this morning. I wasn't sure if it'd be here today or tomorrow, but here she is. So now we have a fancy lip that may or may not fit this bumper. I was gonna buy the Maxton design one that they make for the R32 bumper, but again, I don't know if it even fit and it's a much more expensive lip to buy. This one I got off eBay, I think it was like 35 bucks shipped from Turkey. So um, it was a cheap option, I had to wait a little bit, but if it fits properly and I like it, maybe later on I'll go to the Maxton design one that's a bit more aggressive and a bit bigger. Um, but we'll see. All right, so while I wait for the epoxy to dry on the bumper, we're gonna go ahead and open up our fancy new lip. And I gotta say, very minimalistic packaging to go across the world. Cause this came from Turkey and they just said, send it. But I mean, it's a plastic lip, it can't really break, but I expect at least a box. It is what it is. It finally made it here, I don't care. All right, so there is our lip. Left side, center, and right side. So hopefully, this will fit our Zenner bumper. We have a little bit of room to do some adjustment if I need to. I don't see any Sayat part number or branding, so it's probably not a real one. But it's cool. It's like textured. It's brand new. So you know what? For 30 bucks, it is what it is. There she is in all her glory, our Cooper R lip. I'm actually surprised. It has like the nice texture on it it's a cool lip where else can you get a multi-piece lip for 30 bucks no complaints so just hopefully it'll fit under that in a somewhat fitting manner so like i said earlier the zender bumper in overall shape is fairly similar to the bora r bumper or the golf r32 bumper but what i did not expect is you see how this comes this way and how the bumper has this little point to it and how this kind of matches almost perfectly yeah, that's pretty cool so the center supports here are a little bit too high to actually get the corners to actually meet maybe not I'm probably go through and trim these down a little bit but I'm hyped on how this kind of fits the actual line of the bumper it goes back out that's pretty cool so Overall, it looks like this can work. The sides might be a little bit too long. Might need to cut the ends down a little bit, but to cut up a $30 lip 
isn't the end of the world. So I don't know if I'll have time to do this today, but I think if we can trim the ends to match the bumper and then trim these down, match this curve and have this gap here close up until it all sits flush, I think we'll be in good, uh, good shape. Now I don't know how I'm gonna secure it, maybe double-sided tape on the flat section here, or I don't really wanna put any screws in it. We're gonna figure it out, but I'm hyped that that almost matches this pretty nicely. That's pretty cool. All right, so looking at this lip from a different perspective, for the most part, the center section, pretty much from the corner of the bumper, like right here to right there, should work once I trim these two little center arms. That way it's, it's flush and these can fit up. But if you look, this thing is wider than the entire center bumper. So I can get the whole middle section to work, but the end sections just are too wide. And I don't know enough about like cutting and shortening and plastic welding things together. That may work, but then the size reduces and it, I don't know. So I might just cut the center section a little bit and make it work to about the corner. But then for like this section of the bumper to have like this match up like that, simply like that. You see right now, this is matched up to where I would say it should go for the most part. And then obviously the center is way, way off. So, so we can do. This may not be a lip for this bumper. Like that. There's no actual other lips for this bumper that I'm aware of. Um, maybe the Rieger flat splitter that goes with the Mark III's, that might be a closer fit to this. Or if Zender sells some sort of just flat splitter, maybe not for this bumper, but just out of their catalog, that might also be an option just to get a little bit more down here and also to have something between the bumper and the ground. So I'd rather scrape up a lip than just the bumper. We might just be onto something. So I went ahead and cut those two little supports in the middle so now the entire lip sits flush to the bottom of the bumper. The problem was this lip was way too wide for this bumper. Um, but all I did, since it's like very thin plastic, I just kind of bent it in and followed the line of the bumper. So we would need some screws or a dose that tape was strong enough. But if I just tape it and follow the line of the bumper, it kind of works. Definitely gives a much more aggressive look to the bottom side of the bumper. I don't know if I love that on the side, it's kind of like back. I'd almost want a lip that maybe came out a little more, or maybe I don't. Maybe this is fine. Cause like in the front, you can see it kind of follows this nicely and then kind of goes back just a little bit. So it would give you that more square look of the front end where it kind of swoops up. Huh. Really not bad so i have to decide if i wanted to use i'll probably double-sided tape i don't really want to send screws that close to the outside of the bumper you might be able to see it but this may work this might just work all right so the plan of attack is going to be trim paint the lip today let it dry overnight and tomorrow we'll come back and go about actually securing the lip to the bumper because i actually really like it and it does add a very aggressive look to the front where it kind of swoops up. It wasn't too aggressive, but now that flat bit of it really adds a nice touch to the bumper. Um, so that'll go on tomorrow. And then for the end of today, I'm going to toss on this little shark fin antenna I got because I have this one right now, which isn't bad, but the bottom section here, the seal's all gone. It's kind of like worn looking. So nice new one, fresh seal, little shark fin look for the car. Trim paint. All right, so for us to go ahead and actually remove our antenna, you already see. It's already loose, I have to disconnect the wire. But on a wagon, you have your top piece goes across right here. You have a side panel, side panel, pull all three off. And then very carefully, if you want to drop more, you can. But you can carefully pull this down and you can get in there to 22 for the nut that holds on the bottom of the base. So very carefully get in there. You can see, hope you can see right up there is where the bottom is, where the nut goes, and then you have to unplug your antenna right here, and then you can go through, simply slide it out, and then reverse this process for your new one. And now this bolt on there, not super tight. You don't wanna go crazy and like crinkle your roof, but snug it down, all set. Now with our antenna unplugged, we just go ahead and fish it through. 
like so you can see the bottom the seal's gone it's all faded i think this yeah ecs tuning stubby antenna that i got for the junkyard <laughs> two three years ago which looks cool but the shark fin adds a nice little clean touch to the roof line quick thing i want to show about the new one the old one you can see there is a square bit of silicone around it as a seal or it was a square seal to begin with i'm not really sure but on this one you've got the round seal there which this is far too high to actually fit down through the hole in the roof and actually mate up and be flat so what i'm gonna have to do is push this circle over in here all the way down flat around the bottom side so it'll be a square and i have to go through and actually try and super glue it down because it will fit but it won't stay on its own so that's what we're going to do to fix that and i'll show you the uh, the end result before it goes in but if you're confused on why it doesn't fit it's because this gasket is not correct all right so here is our end result our circle o-ring is now a square put a little bit of glue in each corner to hold it down in place and now it should work no problem that's a nice little touch to the roof line i know a lot of guys with wagons like to shave the rails off and shave the antenna as well and have just a smooth roof the entire way i don't mind the roof racks and i don't mind the antenna i think that adds a nice little look to the roof so we're pretty much done for today tensioners on we've now got fancy magnetic plates front and rear which make life much easier look at this just so simple off on bam too easy and then like i said tomorrow we're gonna try and get this thing actually mounted up to the bumper i love how the car looks i love the kit if you look the front just swoops up just ever so slightly it's not terrible some days i don't mind it other days it bugs the crap out of me but if i can make that lip work and kind of just square out the front a little bit and make it look a little bit more aggressive i'm all for it so hopefully the lip works out one last thing for end the video um we've been talking about on the patreon for quite a while now i don't know what it is but i love these wheels and i love the fitment with the brakes and the whole overall great great wheel but i have wheels in the car right now that i love but i've been just looking for other wheels for the longest time now i don't know if it's i don't know what it is honestly i kind of want something or no i really want something that has um a nice polished lip to it been looking at bentley Mulliners. um we had a poll on the patreon a few days ago or yesterday a lot of people said oz mitos which there are set for sale in jacksonville but i think they're priced a little bit too high and they're also 18 so they're 18 9 front 18 10 rear so good specs in the width wise but i want to stay 19 i would love some oz futuras i do not have futura money but the Moliners, that's a 19 inch multi-piece wheel paul slip they're 19 9 front 19 9 rear like I love these wheels. Maybe if they are polished or I really love them as they are, but just like some days I walk out, I'm like, I want new wheels today. Other days I'm like, this is it. Like this is perfect. The brake fitment in the front's perfect. Like, so leave some comments down below. What do you guys think for wheel options for the wagon? Should we keep the Panamera wheels, which I love, or should we change it up? I think the top on my list right now is a set of the two piece um, BBS Bentley Mulliners. I love those wheels. They're 19s. I have literally only found out of all my searching, and I'm really good at searching for wheels and pictures of cars, but I went through literally all of the Jetta wagon search results on Instagram, the Bore wagon, the Golf 4 wagon, the Bore variant, all of it. I found one person who has a Mark IV Bore wagon on Bentley Mulliners, and it looks sick. So, I don't know, but so this looks good too. I can't decide. So, leave whatever wheel option you think would look good on the wagon down below do we keep the panamera one do we go to moliners do we look for i don't know oz mitos do we change something or just let it be also i think once the car is bagged on these wheels it'll also look well, i don't know because i like the static as well honestly i'm just rambling i i don't know what i want i love this like zender kit porsche wheels porsche brakes kw's like this is all sick but at the same time bagged on other wheels or bagged on these wheels would also be cool so i guess at the end of all this static or leave it static or go to air probably gonna go to air but leave a comment down below and if i change the wheels what would you change them to i want to stay 19s um but with bagged 18s would be fine i guess but still want to stay 19s or do we keep the panamera turbos because this looks so good i've really gotten nowhere 
I've been doing this for like three, four weeks now about new wheels and leave a comment down below. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Do not forget, be thankful for every single day. See you guys next time. Peace.